So you want to learn piano, take lessons, whether you're a beginner, an adult returner, or young or old or in the middle, stick around. This is the future of piano lessons. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in beautiful downtown San Antonio, Texas. And today I have a new partner to introduce. Hey folks, I'm EB. And he's with our Kansas City store, which is a Kauai piano gallery. Yes, sir. And today we're going to talk about, did you bring a piano fact? I did you, you know, didn't. but well, I sort of did, but I know that you guys sort of specialized in, you know, uh, this rare piano fact that may entice you. I didn't have one about pianos in specific, but I do have one in particular it's about me. Would that work? That'll work. Let okay. Me hear it. So most people, when uh, deep diving, the th my three fans uh, within the world of the internet, uh, when they're deep diving my, my the lore of how I started playing the piano, uh, will discover that I actually did not start learning how to play piano when I was three on a piano. What'd you start on? So you're gonna love this. You may re uh, recognize it by description. So Fisher Price used to make a little toy xylophone. Right. This is my brother's, old, my older brother's toy xylophone with multicolor, like the rainbow, right. or like an octave right. there, on wheels with a little clacker. Yeah. They're still okay. Those. Yeah, and so I don't have a musical family to save our lives, and I'm the only guy, right? But and you so, had a scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you, and you could roll it and go, burp, 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 right? And so what I uh, found out was you could really play it very well because the mallet was lost to, to you know, right. r within days of, of acquiring. So, but Star Wars was big back then, and I found that Chewbacca, the action figure, because of the round head, or C-3PO also made, made a, a very- mallet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, super, super. There you go. So, um, the future of, of teaching, and here, here's the thing, you learned, you started learning on a scale, and a lot of, um, in education in the country, a lot of times, first exposure, to music that is on an educational level where it's not just making a note or making a tone or playing along in a song, but it's like, here's the paper part. These are, this is how the math of music works is uh, elementary school with recorders a lot right, of times. Right. And, and now back in my day, elementary school, almost every elementary school room had an upright piano in it, or there was one or two in each wing of the building or section of the building. So you could go across the hallway and cover four or five classes. Yep. Uh, in public schools, we had different kind of arrangements with uh, everyone sang. There, was no, there wasn't a choir or a chorus class. It was like once every other week or once a week, uh, the teacher would come around with the piano and the whole class would exactly. sing. Exactly. And so that, that, I had that kind of exposure in the 60s. But when, when I was a kid growing up learning piano, it was almost, there was one way to learn piano, and that was in a room with a teacher. Yep. And things have really changed. And I understand... Um, What's really exponentially changed things was the pandemic, and all of a sudden people couldn't be together in the same room. You couldn't smack students' hands on a. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've always been a student, so uh, you know, right? I've been hit on the knuckles. Okay, that is, that is part nuns with rulers. That really does exist. That's it, not that's not a wives' tale. Yeah, I experienced that. Yes. So tell me how you used to teach. Let me. See, I'm going to guess because I don't know the answer. Sure. Say three, four years ago, how mm -hmm. you teach now? Oh, sure. So I was one of the early adopters of bringing in technology as part of my teaching method when it came to telecommunications, right? So Skype has been around long before Zoom was. And the reason I adopted using virtual lessons and online lessons uh, several years before the pandemic was, again, born out of necessity. I was moving at the time from Atlanta, Georgia to Greenville, South Carolina, gotcha. but I had many students who uh, wanted to continue with me. So I had to figure out a way to not have to drive to it. I started off driving once uh, once a month, oh, still keeping gotcha. it in person. Gotcha. So because people weren't still quite used to it, so I didn't want to lose it. Uh, and lose all, all that student well, base. And it's like, well, let's, let's, make it a, let's make it a hybrid. And so uh, we started doing that with Skype every other week and driving to Atlanta, which got old in a hurry. And thankfully, most of those students still really liked the Skype lessons. They, they took to it very naturally. Wow. And so I had seen the power of blending online lessons with in-person lessons very early on. So when the pandemic rolled up, 
and folks started thinking, what do we do? I actually pulled the trigger before almost all of right. the other you teachers. Right, you kind of already had like, a foundation Guys, this will, this will work, guys, just trust me. And so I'll guide us through here, but I'm not gonna be doing in person, and switched. Now the fun thing was though, I had Skype at that time, and I found out that very few people who had not been doing this really ha had been using Skype much. Most people have been using FaceTime, right? right, right FaceTime, right. or they'd been using uh, that plus this other weird new tech. You might have, Zoom, have you ever heard yeah, of that? Yeah, right. <laughs> so, well, th that was out there, and, and yeah. everyone was like, what's Zoom? What's Zoom? Right. How do you get Zoom? How do you work Zoom? Yeah, and, now yeah. it's like Google. It's a yeah, term. It's, it's That's every, basically yeah. it's an everyday yeah. verbiage, right? It's pretty neat how stuff changed like that. But, yeah. you know, uh, necessity drives you yeah. know, form, function, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, when, when it comes down to... Um, face-to-face -face lessons when was the last time other than your move from atlanta mm -hmm. that you've really had a face-to-face -face lesson mm -hmm. and do you take on face-to-face -face lessons now got it so pre-covid i was a hybrid studio mostly focusing on in person okay right? and most of those students because this was a while back when i moved had already aged out and moved on they were mostly kids and they'd graduated and gone right. off and to do other things but actually my longest student that i've ever had was a student who i had in atlanta and he switched to the hybrid model and, and did online until he graduated high school went off to college. Gotcha. but in terms of in person i went to completely online for the the pandemic and i've never looked back what i found was my experience in terms of teaching my, and being able to uh, give instruction to students as well as their experience, their ability to progress, uh, watching all of the metrics uh, from students that I had in person to go to online, as well as students who were added online, but really being able to gauge some students that I had for years and being able to watch their progress, I saw, if anything, a slight bump in their overall ability to be able to grow to be able to develop and to be able to mature as piano players because of this really? new approach of doing online lessons. So, I've heard that from a couple of other teachers. Yeah. They seem to get more out of their yeah. students. I, and I think what it is, is I think the wear and tear of going there and coming back and having to think about 100%. it the night, oh man, I got lessons tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I, got, I, I mean, it's not just school, it's uh, after school and then after sports and then piano lessons and then home, I don't get to eat till late. All that, all that bears into a student's willingness or anyone's desire and drive to either want to do it or kind of like not push so hard. Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you another thing about your curriculum and I know everyone's got their standard core, yeah, but yeah. if I took lessons from you and, and I said, look, uh, I'm learning stuff from you. You're teaching me chords and scales or uh, uh, monitoring my hand or whatever mm -hmm. exercises I'm doing. But at the same time, you know, I spend a lot of time watching guys play on YouTube mm -hmm. and they have these overhead cameras. Right. And, and uh, now I know you may not like the way these guys are teaching me, but uh, do you have a list of authorized overhead cameras or do you make your own overhead camera videos? You say, oh, you can watch videos by this guy because mm -hmm. he's not going to steer you wrong. He's going to do the finger. The last right. thing you want is your student watching someone that's a hack that doesn't follow right. the correct classical. If, if they want to learn classical, right. the right kind of finger patterns yeah. and, and even playing chords the right great way. Great technique in general. Yeah. I, I, right. Yep. Uh, so... Do you, what do you do? Do you have overhead camera to make I it do. easy? I okay. do, yeah, I use a multi-cam setup. That's exactly right. Okay. So I've got one that's shooting from overhead. Uh -huh. And so what I'm using, I'm using a technology called OBS, which is a streaming platform that I use whenever I perform as well. But it's at, I also use it for online lessons because you can combine multiple camera shots all into so one. So like you can like... You got the face cam, just like you're kind of seeing And then right like now, see your hands this and right way the and bottom overhead. And see the overhead as I play. So I'm talking, that's one of the huge things that's a huge benefit. They, I can talk to them, communicate, while they see me play and they can see all in once okay. and be able to take it I have a technical question for yeah. our, our, our crew and stuff. You have like one on off button that does everything, sound, all three, four cameras go, multi cameras, they all start just by, okay, here's my lesson. <laughs> or do you have to on, on, there, on, double there, check? There, there's a few is more steps than one or oh, two, okay, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I, just, sure. I just want to clear that up in my head. I have I a good idea. Well, no, I have an idea now what you're going through for each oh, lesson. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I thought, there's a lot of prep. This dude's got it set up to where it's like pro deal. It's like, I'm rolling. Yeah, that's that's yeah. a lot of money, time, effort and practice and rehearsal to get to that point. Yeah. Where you can just walk in, sit down and do a video. Yes. Yes. And only focus on your performance in the video. Yep. Yep. And, and a lot of times, you know, when you're trying, it's more difficult when you're trying to teach someone. I mean, the only thing that, that we've really tried to teach here on the videos is product presentations. Yeah. And. I know a lot of people come here just to see the products and, and, and for the conversation, but and we do play. And mm -hmm. a lot of times 
I mean, we're restricted on what we can play. A lot of people don't understand that. Yeah. Uh, whatever you play has to be public domain. Right. And you don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it. And then what happens if I sit down and I do play a Chopin piece or a Beethoven piece, and then people aren't focusing on the, the keyboard. They're not focusing on the concept of the video. They're critiquing the guy playing it. Right. And say, well, right. you need to practice right. more. So, Man, you should hire right. me to come down right. to the studio. Right. All these comments we get. Yes. And, I, and, and on a teaching video, what I like about it is a lot of times, uh, and I've seen this in the last 20 years, the strictness of what used to be a piano lesson mm. has kind of gone out the window. Yes. And I really like that because yes. the strictness that used to be a piano recital mm -hmm. where you got dressed up like you're going to a wedding or a funeral to go in there and try to have fun playing music. Yeah. For anyone in the clothes, it's, it's an awkward social environment because all the students and their families and their extended families oh, are yeah. there. So it's kind of weird. It's mm -hmm. not a church thing, It's not, a, it, but it's a weird thing. It's, it's a culture phenomenon to itself, isn't it? Right, and so yeah. I did have students at once. I taught yeah. class piano and then I had a bunch of uh, private ones and I said, we're gonna do a recital, but our recital is Two o'clock on Saturday, whatever you're normally doing at two o'clock on Saturday, stop at 1.30, come in here. <laughs> Shorts, awesome. underwear, long, yeah, yeah. long bathing suit, whatever it is. And the kids had a great time. And I it bet. was a really, really successful recital. So yeah. that's, how do you handle a recital yeah, on yeah. a Zoom? And uh, what do you collect a video and say, hey, we're all there together? So we really had to chart a new course, all of us, didn't we? When, when, when we weren't able to do in person, we had to right. figure out different ways. And I tried a few different methods. And uh, at first, what I did was, because I used Zoom, what I found out first off, right at the very, very beginning, is all these multi-platforms of how people we communicate, that ain't gonna fly. And so I had, because it just got very, um, like the pre-midi days of digital keyboards. Right, right, yeah, like how do you connect every, like, and everybody had a different standard, and you just like, you just pick the best one, and we're just going to adopt that. So Zoom ended up winning out hands down. And so I've been teaching with Zoom since very early on, and that's what I use consistently. With that, because of having Zoom and having its proliferation happen, uh, I was able to say, okay, if you kids want to be able to do a show, we can put together uh, a little concert where we're going to stream and anybody who wants to come join as you perform, we're going to set you up so you can perform just like you would for your piano lesson, but we're just going to invite people at a certain time, you know, to be able to join the stream. So Wednesday, 7 p.m., you know, uh, the Ted piano recital, right? Okay, and Ted's going to rock and roll on it and you just send out your invites to those people and they'll be able to hear what you've been working on. So that gotcha. was one thing that we did initially. Then I sort of took it to the next level where when I used to be a lounge piano player at a hotel for a bunch of years, one of the things that I did for my piano recitals with my kids, it wasn't really a recital, it was a really chance for them to actually perform at the lounge. It was a hotel. Give them an audience. Right, and so they would come in and their families could come hang out in the lounge at the hotel, really nice hotel, and they'd be able to order snacks and drinks and foods or whatever they wanted to the do. Beer makes a kid yeah. recite a lot more Oh, tolerable. you are <laughs> preaching to the choir. Yeah. And so they just had a blast and they could take the photos and the kids felt, because they were literally playing in a professional place at a hotel. Right. Right. So what we've done and, and, and sort of incorporated and imported that idea, well, I'm now a live streamer so that most of what my uh, performances are is in a live stream format on Twitch. And so these kids have now learned how to be live streamers themselves. So I'll invite them in. Okay, guys, opening the stream today will be so and so Ted. Ted's going to stream these this the next 10 minutes of his performance and people will be able to come in and watch on an actual live stream produced content. These guys streaming and me collaborating with them via the, the Zoom camera that way. So wow. it's a ton of fun. So they are prepped and ready to go if they want to share their music with the world. They have all the tools, not just from playing the piano, learning the songs, and being able to stream to me to Zoom, but to actually be able to create a quality live stream just like they would on any right. live stream platform. Wow. That's fascinating. It's a ton of fun. What am I missing here in the lessons? We've done lessons, we've done face to face, we've mm -hmm. done Zoom, mm -hmm. we've touched a little bit on curriculum, which I don't want to spend a lot of time sure. on because everyone has oh, their yeah. own way. Right. And, I, and I believe that. Um, if it's a returning adult or anyone that is conscientious of what they want to do on the instrument, yeah. they should drive their own curriculum. Yes. And it's not really a teaching post. It's more yeah. like a coaching post. Exactly. Like, hey, man, you want to play that song? I'll show you how to do it. 100%. As long as you don't want to be able to sit down and read and reference the notes, I'll give you a different way to do it, and you'll be playing it in no time. Yep. And a lot of people think that's not really learning music. You're right. They're not learning it. They're just playing it and having a great time. Right. They're just, and what are yeah. they missing by not knowing the math? Yes, correct. You know the math of your cell phone? Right. No, I don't. Nope. It's, it goes out to bazillions of digits. Exactly. And that's just one one form, one algorithm, one yeah, function. Yeah, sheet music is out. just the map. It's not the territory. It, it really is. 
EB, this has been a wonderful conversation. Hey, I look forward to learning a little bit more about uh, this streaming thing because I think that really is going to be the future of uh, album releases and all that kind of stuff. And people that, hey, tune in at 9 o'clock and we're going to be here at this place. If you can be there, great. If you can't, just tune in wherever you are in the world and, and it'll be there. Yeah. So, again, thank you for listening. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. We're looking to get more subscribers. We want to get ourselves on the piano channel, one of those nice little silver 100,000 plaques. I'm not afraid to ask a bold and daring. <laughs> Subscribe to our channel, give us thumbs up. If you have questions or comments, either from me or EB, please listen, we, uh, we love getting back to you and uh, enjoy the conversations. And this is EB from the Kauai Piano Gallery in Kansas City, and I'm Ted Barsley with Alamo Music Center, Kauai's main piano line here in San Antonio, and we'll look for you in the future, and thanks for listening. See you soon.